In this short video, we'll look at a root locus. We'll first look at understanding what root locus exactly is, and in the second part of this uh, uh, video lecture, <coughs> we'll look at uh, drawing root locus by hand. Root locus or loci, the definition is the march of the roots of the characteristic equation. Uh, the roots of the characteristic equation obviously are the poles of the closed loop transfer function in the complex plane as a single system parameter is changed. Uh, the motivation. We all know that characteristic equation pretty much determines system behavior. You, you have or do not have system stability depending on the roots of the characteristic equation. The type of response, damp sinusoidal, pure sinusoidal, um, over damped, uh, under damped, critically damped response, everything is because of uh, the characteristic equation. Now, if you can change the characteristic equation and the roots of the characteristic equation, and because of that, the poles of the closed loop transfer function by changing a single parameter, then we can do design. When we what we do we mean by design is you fix the location of the closed loop system poles for a given set of design requirements. Let's look at loop locus illustration. Here you have a closed loop system. D is the controller. G is the plant. D is given by two times s plus one divided by s plus k. The plant is one divided by s squared. K is the parameter that we are going to change in order to change the behavior of the closed loop system essentially by selecting k we fix the location of the closed loop poles the closed loop poles also happen to be the roots of the characteristic equation and the characteristic equation is the denominator of the closed loop transfer function so the first step we'll take is to find the characteristic equation characteristic equation is given by c of s equal to 1 plus dg we have derived this many times. I won't go ahead and derive it again. So you just look at your previous notes in order to find this expression. Now if I substitute D and G, this is what I get. This is D, this is G. I cross multiply with the common denominator. S squared times S plus K. This is what I get. Now that is my characteristic equation. I see what happens if I put in different values of k. What happens to the roots of the characteristic equation? So if I k equal to 0, I put in k equal to 0 and solve it. I get 3 roots. It's a cubic equation. You get 3 roots. You get a real root, which is in the left half plane, and a complex pair that is in the right half plane. So at k equal to 0, this system, this closed loop system is unstable. You increase k to k equal to 0.5. You get three different roots these roots are different from these roots so changing k changes the roots again you get a real root that is in the left half plane and a complex pair that is in the right half plane the system is still unstable put k equal to 2.5 get three other roots the real root here in the left half plane it is stable now you see that the complex pair 2 has moved into the left half plane because it has negative real parts. Therefore, this closed loop system is stable. Essentially, what you've done here is by changing k, we made a closed loop system that was unstable, we made it stable. So changing k gave us stability. So that we've satisfied the basic requirement of control system design. You can change k more, you get see what happens. k equal to 100. Now I use MATLAB to plot the actual root locus and I'll show you later how to use MATLAB to plot root locus. Um, this is the root locus, this is the complex plane here. These radial lines are lines of constant damping. Um, these are circles of constant omega n and then you know the rest. So since it's a th third order system there are uh, three branches to the root locus the blue branch the green branch and the red branch at k equal to zero the closed loop poles are at this location this location here the complementary location is right here and the real one here as you increase k this branch goes from here like so 
that this branch goes from here like so like that and this branch goes from here like that also notice that when you start k equal to 0 the system is unstable at some point the system becomes stable right here when it crosses the imaginary axis the root loop has crossed the imaginary axis now if my goal is just to make the system stable then I need to choose values of k such that my root locus is between here and here. So some value of k where the root locus cross the imaginary axis and k equal to infinity. So this whole segment of the root locus I can put my closed loop poles anywhere here. Now let me put a design constraint. In addition to stability I say my settling time is less than some value. Now the region of the complex plane that satisfies this constraint is this gray region. The portion of the root locus that satisfies this constraint is just this portion here. Notice that uh, this branch is always in the valid region but the root, this root, this pole uh, is not as significant as the pole here because it's much closer to the imaginary axis so this dominates the behavior this is what decide decides <coughs> what the response is going to look like let me go ahead and put <coughs> excuse me let me go ahead and put another constraint settling um, the percentage overshoot less than some value so the valid region is the common region between this constraint and this constraint that is this yellow region that is right here the portion of the root locus that is inside the valid region is only this much and let me go ahead and post another constraint rise time less than some value which means that for this constraint the valid region of the complex plane is everything outside this circle now if you combine all three constraints the valid region is this blue region and the portion of the root locus that is inside this blue region is just this so you can place your closed loop poles anywhere in this segment and you'll satisfy all three design constraints or design requirements notice there is an upper and lower value for k to satisfy the design requirements as you start with k equal to 0 keep on increasing k you reach enter stable stable region and then at some point you enter the uh, region valid region which is the blue region that's the lower limit for k you keep on increasing k at some point you'll exit the valid region that's the upper limit for k you can choose a value of k anywhere in between the lower and upper limit and the corresponding location of the closed loop poles.